Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Boer and uh, this is a screencast tutorial intended for EPIC teachers who attended the March 2011 Dejan workshop. I was a lecturer and I gave a presentation on technology in the classroom but specifically focusing on game creation and PowerPoint. Uh, right now I'm going to uh, give you a little explanation of how I developed this game. This is one of my example games. The game I call it Soccer Vocab, and I designed this from scratch, so I'm going to run the program and I'm going to show you how to play. Okay, so to play this game, you divide the class into two teams, and there's a soccer ball. The soccer ball starts in the middle of the field. So usually I just divide the, t the class in half down the middle. Usually the kids are sitting in three columns of two columns each going back five rows and I give each student a, a small piece of paper, a scratch piece of paper to write on and then one student from each team at a time comes to the board everyone in the class has to come to the board, has to participate for their team and uh, the players at the front of the class at the board are the writers and everyone else can read the questions and help the writers if the writers do not know the answer. So they have scratch pieces of paper, the people sitting down, and if they read the question and they know it, they can write it down and then run up to the front of the class and hand it to the person who is writing on the chalkboard. So the ball starts in the middle, and let's say team one, uh, team one gets the first question. The first question is, where are you from? The answer is, I'm from Canada. So the students on the board, students at the board have to write from Canada. And then you click this and it'll take you back to the menu. That box disappears, so that question can no longer be asked again. So let's say team two got it correct. The ball will then be moved to here. So the ball moves down the field to the left or to the right, opposite of whatever team uh, got the question correct. So we'll go to question two. Where is your classroom? So the students have to write on the board correctly. It's on the second floor. This is the first floor, second floor. So let's say team one got that correct. Ball moves back to the middle. So it only moves one little dot at a time. So question three. Yes, we have. Correct answer is science class. So they have to write science class on the board. So let's say team two got that correct. Next question, where are you from? I'm from Korea. We'll keep pretending like team two. Team two keeps getting questions correct. Five, the ball is under the table. So team two has now moved the ball all the way to the goal and they have scored. So I click on this little guy. Okay, now team two has scored one point. So this changes to one, and the ball is reset in the middle. And you keep playing until the class time runs out or you run out of questions. Uh, I have 30 boxes and 30 questions prepared, so the game can, depending, depending on the class, the, the game can go usually between 20 and 30 minutes. And the kids have a lot of fun. This is one of my most popular games. For this uh, screencast, I'm going to tell you how I made these boxes, the score counters. So for example, score is zero. One, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm going to show you how I made that, just to give you a feel for how triggers work and how they can be a lot of fun when creating stuff. So first we're going to go up to the menu and we're going to go insert, insert shapes and just a, a rectangle. And this red border, I think, is clip art, and I just inserted that as a frame for the scorecards. So we're going to put a box inside that box, and we want it to be even. Okay, that's what it looks like. Uh, first, we're just going to click on it and then type, for example, uh, zero. Now, it's really small, so you can change that. Go to Home, and then you can change the font to something fun, for example, Baskerville Old Face, and then make it bigger so you can see it. So maybe maybe 72. That looks good. Now I'm going to copy and paste it five more times. So I'm going to use Control-C on the keyboard, 
and then control V control V control V control V control V oops control V all right so I've got a bunch of zeros so I'm gonna change these to one two three four and five now I don't want them all to be the same color because that's not interesting so you can go you can click on it then go to the top and go to format and change it to any of these uh, just give me pre format so we've got a green we've got a purple a red an orange a lighter blue and uh, another purple sure no that's the same color so um, how about this dark blue okay so they're all different colors just to give it a little bit more contrast and we're gonna use triggers to have the boxes um, come onto the screen and go off the screen so first we're gonna create all of our entrances now uh, zero is uh, going to be the default so it's gonna be on the screen once the screen is loaded so you don't need to create an entrance for that so we're gonna create an entrance for one so I'll show you how to get there so your window is gonna look like this if you go to animations then custom animation it'll open this side window and this is how you control all the custom animations on uh, a given slide so click on box one and then go to add effect and we're going to create entrance and so there's many entrances you can choose from for example circle box flash once peek in we're going to go with checkerboard because checkerboard kind of reminds me of soccer sports you know so click on checkerboard and then you're gonna click on the little down arrow to go to timing and then triggers it's under the timing tab triggers and we're gonna have the box numbered one appear start effect on click of uh, the rectangle that is labeled zero and we're gonna do the same thing for every box so ent entrance checkerboard timing triggers and this one's going to appear when you click on one this one is going to checkerboard appear when you click on two this one is going to checkerboard appear when you click on three this one's going to checkerboard appear when you click on four okay so now they'll all appear so we'll go ahead and run it so click on one click on two click on three click on four click on five good now we want them not only to appear but to also disappear so if you want zero to disappear when you click on zero you have to add that effect so I'm gonna click on the box zero add effect exit exit checkerboard and then on timing when you click on the box marked zero so I'm gonna do the same thing for each one of these exit checkerboard timing triggers which one am I on two okay this one is three three exit checkerboard timing 
four. And then the last one, I believe. Checkerboard, timing, five. Okay, let's try that. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now you notice they didn't disappear. But if I try clicking on them again, now that it disappears, 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 disappears. What we want is we want that to happen at the same time. We want one to appear and for zero to disappear at the same time. And you'll notice there's this number next to the mouse click. So there's a one and a two. So it's saying the first time you click on rectangle two, three will appear. The second time you click on rectangle two, uh, rectangle two will disappear. We want to change the order of that. So if you click on the second one, and right now it says modify, start, on click. We want to do with previous. Next one. With previous. Next one. With previous. Next one. With previous. Next one. With previous. Okay. So let's try it now. Okay, it worked. And this one says after previous, that's why it was slower. Okay, with previous. Now, we also want sound. We, we created the animation of the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I want the cash register noise, the noise, the cha-ching when you click on it. So you can click on all the entrances, go to effect options, and then under sound, enhancements sound, you can go down to cash register. It's one of the default sounds. It just comes with Microsoft PowerPoint. Effect options, cash register, effect options, cash register. Oops. Effect options, cash register, effect options. Cash register. Okay, let's try it now. I'm going to turn up the volume so hopefully you can hear it. Okay, that's what we wanted. But now we want them all to line up. So you just click on it and then slide them up. So they're all overlapping. I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to move them up, down, left, right, so forth. Okay, let's give it a try, see what it looks like. Okay, there you go. That's how I created my uh, scorekeeper, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, this just gave you a feel of what you can do with triggers and animations. Once again, there's infinite possibilities. You're only limited by your creativity and imagination. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment or email me. And thank you for listening.